So I spent a crazy amount of time last month trying to create snow on one of my GeoLayers map animations, and I could not get it to work. And this is mainly due to the fact that a GeoLayers rig, the way that it's set up, is it's mostly 2D. It doesn't use the native After Effects cameras. So this is pretty limiting because when you're trying to create snow, there's two main effects that I was trying to use, uh, CC Ball Action and CC Particle World. Both of these effects, while they're applied to 2D layers, they work with After Effects cameras to really sell that 3D effect. So this was very limiting and frustrating until this week, GeoLayers just introduced a new script that allows you to create 3D scenes that use After Effects cameras. Problem solved. I was able to create this snow effect. I'm very happy with it. And today I'm going to show you how this new feature works. It's freaking awesome. And if you want to follow along, be sure to update to the latest version of GeoLayers and After Effects. And as always, if you want to master GeoLayers, check out my GeoLayers 3 Masterclass. Okay, so I've got my basic GeoLayers project set up here. To create a 3D scene, I'll just click on the Run Script File button up here and select Create 3D Scene and Camera. This is gonna tell me that it's gonna create a composition with a camera that matches the map comps animation. Wicked. Since I'm gonna be creating snow, I'm gonna call it Snow. Now down here in the timeline, you can see the new composition as well as a new null object right here. So if you open this up, this is what we've got going on here. So we have a text layer that's giving us a little context as to what's going on. We have a new map comp camera that matches the movements of our GeoLayers map comp or our containing map comp. And then we have this floor shape layer, which is just a square to give us a visual reference as to what the camera's doing. So for example, if I come into the GeoLayers panel and change uh, the bearing and the pitch, you'll see that the floor changes here because this camera is essentially moving. And right up here, the text layer is telling us, feel free to put any 3D layers and objects inside this comp or use 3D effects that support After Effects cameras. And that's the big deal for me. I'm gonna be using these simulation effects to create snow. So this composition, this pre-comp is gonna allow me to do that. And then it tells you right here, uh, use the effect controls of snow origin pin layer in your map comps containing comp to change the position and scale of your 3D scene on the map. So what does that mean? Well, if you we go back to the containing comp here and I wanna move my 3D scene around, I just grab this null object, go to effect controls, and here I can move around the pixel offset to move the X, Y, and the Z of this layer, and I can also scale it if I wanna move it around. Now you can actually create multiple 3D scenes and they will always be created in the middle of your composition. So if I move the, the GeoLayers comp, to another location and create a new 3D scene, it will be centered in the middle of my map comp and give me an all new 3D scene. So it's super cool, super powerful. So let's jump back into this comp and actually create our snow. So I'm gonna turn off the floor layer. I'm gonna right click here and go to new solid. I'll call this snow. And now I'm gonna go to effects and presets and under simulation, I wanna grab CC ball action. There's a couple of different effects I could use here to create this, but we'll just use good old ball action. Now, you don't need to activate 3D for this because a lot of these simulation effects work with 3D cameras, like the effect will work the cameras. In fact, this little symbol right here is telling you that. So to see this, if I change the pitch and the bearing again, now you can see this is moving and I just need to tweak some of the settings here to actually create the snow. So I'm gonna really quickly go through this. We'll change the ball size to 25. Uh, the shading to zero. I can always tweak this later. We'll scatter it and we'll displace it. And I'm gonna bring it to the right here. So that'll just bring it straight up. I don't have any kind of like specific displacement map. It's just a solid. So it's just displacing everything equally, which is perfectly fine for this instance. If I jump back into the map comp here, you can see I now have all of these particles. So if I zoom in, you'll start to see that I'm actually flying through the particles here. And the best way to look at this is to actually render out something. So that's what I'm gonna do. First though, um, one cool way to work is to go back and grab your ball action in the effect controls and lock it right here, lock this panel, so that when you come back to your containing comp, you can play with the snow here and it will reflect instantly. So I'm gonna change the size here. And then we'll just you know, create a quick animation to see how this 3D effect looks, see if it's like everything's tracking good and we have some good parallax. So I'm gonna create some keyframes right here and I'll go to the end of my comp. 
uh, and then move this over here, change the pitch in the bearing and maybe even zoom it in quite a bit so we can see some zoom effect as well. Uh, there we go, and now we'll finalize this, render it out, and let's take a look. Okay, so this is looking great. We have some depth, we have some parallax. Now, one thing to be aware of is that if any of your particles go beyond the map in Z space in the other direction, it's gonna look a little funky because you're gonna still be able to see those particles and it's gonna mess with your, uh, your parallax and your depth. So be sure that they're all um, above the map in Z space. Okay, so now I wanna make this look a little bit better. It doesn't look like real snow. I'm gonna you know, make some tweaks here. So first I'll, I'll change the ball size here. We'll bring that down to five. And I'm gonna add an expression here to animate this snow. I'll do time times 25, and that will hopefully give me some cool action here. And now I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer, and I wanna blur these out. So I'm gonna go and grab pixel motion blur, and I'll pump up the shutter angle to 360, and the shutter samples to eight, and I'll render it out, and let's see what we got. Okay, that looks much, much better. Unfortunately, the render time is much, much longer. But hey, sometimes you got to sacrifice time for quality. All right, now I'm going to go and create a new 3D scene right here. I'm going to call this one text. And we're going to create some cool 3D text. So I'm going to open up this new 3D scene here. I'm going to grab the type tool and I'm going to type in the word maps. I'm going to set this to 3D. So now we've got cool little text here. And I want to do some text extrusion. So I'm going to switch the 3D renderer right here in the composition panel. I'm going to change it to advanced 3D. So since After Effects 2024, they introduced this new render engine that allows you to um, not only extrude your text like Cinema 4D, um, but also you can import 3D objects. So now with that activated, I'm going to open up the parameters of this maps text layer. Now you can see I have geometry and material options. So under geometry, I'm going to start to extrude this. We'll extrude this just a little bit. I'm going to add a cool little bevel style, concave, and then we'll bevel this out a little bit so we can see some, some shadows right here. And I want to go to material options, and I want to make sure that cast shadows is set to on. And now, to actually get a shadow, I need to add a shadow catcher layer. So I'm going to turn off floor. I'm going to add a new solid. So go to new solid, and I'm going to call this shadow catcher hit enter and just make sure like I'm gonna turn on 3d make sure that it's big enough to cover up your text now I'm gonna grab the maps put it on top we still don't really see it don't see that extrusion that's because it's like behind the solid and Z space so we need to grab the widget and just pull this up um, the Z position now I'm not seeing a shadow on the solid why is that well I need a light so I'm gonna right click select new light I'm going to choose environment light type, intensity 100, make sure that cast shadows is set to on, shadow darkness is 75%, that's all cool. Okay, so now this is casting shadows on my solid shadow catcher layer. Now if I open this up and go to material options, um, you can set ex accept shadows to only, so click on that and it'll set it to only. Now you can't see the shadows now and that's because the background of our composition is black. If I toggle the transparency grid, there's our shadow. And now, uh, if you go back to the world map comp, you'll see we've got this super sweet text. Now, the reason you're not seeing this context, this text layer up here, is because this is set to a guide layer. So you can see the symbol right here for guide layer. That means it's like not gonna show up in your renders. If you right click on it, you can see that's how you set a layer to a guide layer. Pretty cool. So now we've got some super sweet 3D text. Now, why would we wanna do this? Because in fact, in our containing comp here, I could just add a text layer and I could switch the 3D render right here to advanced 3D. But one thing you wanna know about 3D renderers is that they will enable and disable certain features. So if you come over here to the text composition again and we go to composition, composition settings, there's a tab for 3D renderer. And you can see right here, it has advanced 3D selected. And as we select this, it gives us two kind of columns here, enabled and disabled. So these are features that will be enabled and disabled as you select this renderer. So if, for example, in our containing comp, we don't wanna disable certain features, this is a really cool workflow. We can have 
um, the classic 3D render retained right here. So all of our layers will still have um, all these features that we want. And then within our pre-comp here, we can enjoy the benefits of the advanced 3D renderer. Now, the particle simulation was really the big takeaway here that I wanted to communicate in this video, but I wanna show you one other cool thing. So let's say we have some 3D objects here. Like I have a high-rise building and I have the MIG uh, fighter jet. These are GLB files. So GLB file format works really well in After Effects. You can kind of just drag and drop it. So this high rise, for example, I could just drag it and drop it directly in here. Click on uh, make comp size and then click OK and check it out. Now we've got this, uh, let me turn off toggle transparency. So now we've got this high rise. I'm gonna hit R for rotation. I'm gonna rotate the X by 90 and hit S for scale. Let's bring this down to like 20. And now we've got this cool little high rise here. I'm gonna take this over and maybe put it on um, in Spain for, for whatever reason. So now we've got a little building here using that same environment light, super cool. I could quickly grab um, our MiG-35 fighter jet and we can drop that in here as well to make comp size because it's gonna be ginormous. And here, now we got a super sweet MiG fighter jet. I'm gonna rotate this by 90, um, bring it up like this, and then scale it way, way down to like, make it a little itsy beatsy fighter jet. There we go. We got some shadow action on the text here. And now I can like, uh, if I want, I can animate this little bad boy um, on the Y position. Let's see, is that Y position or X? That is X position. So let's just animate the X position here and have it like cruising um, all the way to here. So now we've got a building, we've got this 3D text, we've got an airplane flying over, super cool. Maybe I, maybe I went a little overboard, but super cool. 3D scenes and geo layers, woo! I think at this point I should really be using Blender. Okay, so there you have it. Let me know what you think down in the comments section. Do you like this workflow? Do you not like this workflow? I have another tutorial on my channel that talks about the 3D render engine and how to bring in 3D objects. If you wanna check that out, and on my Patreon page, I have a video that shows how to bring it into a GeoLayers project. But I essentially just kind of covered everything in this tutorial. Um, also, I think I'm gonna be getting into uh, some 3D programs pretty soon, maybe towards the second half of this year, because I mean, when you look at when you look at all the hoops I'm jumping through here, it's like, why not just jump into a 3D program at this point? And I did a survey over my Patreon page um, of like, what tools would you like to learn this year? And I threw in Blender, it was like Blender, Python, Adobe Illustrator, Photoshop, or QGIS, and it was overwhelmingly uh, people want to learn Blender. So I think I'm gonna run another survey that's like comparing the 3D programs like Blender, uh, Cinema 4D, Unreal Engine. Somebody else even mentioned Houdini, which I've been super interested in Houdini, but there's obviously that price barrier. So if you wanna learn more about 3D mapping, um, and mapping in 3D programs, be, sh be sure to subscribe to my channel because I'm gonna be getting into that a little bit later. Man, ramble, ramble, ramble. Is this a 20 minute video? See you in the next one.